Is this material talking about past, present, or future? Then you start to dive deeper and deeper into the material. Sit down, my friend. This is a luxurious seat I reserved for you. Good, beautiful. Congratulations. Now, let's play a game. Pay attention, pay attention. Hello, my friend. What can you read from this image here? Hello, my friend. Welcome back. Today, we learn how to have a deep understanding when we listen and when we read something. We'll learn how to understand the opinions and behavior of the speakers, of the writers. And I start this class with this book here, the very, very rich and how they got there. Right now, I'll read to you part of an interview with Conrad Hilton. This guy is the founder of Hilton Hotels. This is a network of hotels around the world. This guy is a magnate billionaire and we'll see part of an interview with him. The interviewer asked, Mr. Hilton, I know you have faced very hard times during the Depression and you lost many hotels. You got leasings until the limit. What made you keep going? Mr. Hilton answers. I wouldn't give up. First, I wouldn't give up because this is not my nature. I thought I would be able to solve that situation sooner or later. In those days, hotels were going broke everywhere. I had a big debt, but I believed I would leave that. And then the interviewer asks, what are some principles? that you applied in your hotel's operation. He says, one of the principles that I insist, that I believe that really works, is that my hotels need to be in perfect conditions. I want my guest to enter my hotels and see a nice bedroom to, and see a clean bathroom. I insist on this. I found out that my client will not complain about the value we charge if we give him a nice stay when he enters our hotel. The interviewer says, Okay, Mr. Hilton, 
your hotels are really clean and nice. And by reading your book, I saw three fundamentals you carry with you. Faith, vision, and hard work. What personal traits do you believe are necessary for success? He says, well, I'll tell you. I believe integrity is key. Never, under any circumstance, cheat. Keep your word. By reading this, we can analyze word by word and see how Conrad Hilton acts. By reading once, we have a general idea. We understand he is an honest guy, he is committed, he is resilient, he is faithful, he is someone who likes to serve. This is common among successful people. Successful people love to serve others. With this in mind, we start our class. Let's warm up. Let's stretch up, cross your fingers and look up and stretch up. Let's count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, release your muscles, rotate your shoulders, now let's do this movement here, but we are going to cross our arms like this, okay, like this, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, now let's breathe, my friend. Breathe in. Breathe out. When you breathe out, relax the muscles of your face. Relax the muscles of your body.
right. Okay. Now I ask you, are you prepared? Of course you are. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hello, my friend. Let's watch part of an interview with Sylvester Stallone. We will first understand the main idea and then we dig into details. Here we go. I'll share my screen with you so then you can watch the interview and I will subtitle the interview so then you will understand what he's talking about. Watch this, please. I finally found that's the role model. <laughs> so when you told your parents what you want to do is be an actor, did they say get a real job or something like that? Well, that's the line uh, in Rocky because, you know, you weren't born much of a brain, so you better start using your body. Uh, they didn't put much uh, faith in that, that particular occupational choice. So I just said, look, guys, uh, it's one of those things where they said, we'll have something to fall back on. I go, what? Literally what? I... I, I, I'm not good at anything other than daydreaming and imagining. Uh, I'm not pragmatic at all. I'm t totally abstract. And uh, they took me to, <laughs> I don't know if I ever told anyone this, at 16, and after being expelled from 11 schools, at 16, they took me to the Drexel Institute of Technology. And they ran a, a battery of tests. And in conclusion, and I still have it, they said, Sylvester seems to be deficient in this and deficient in that. We recommend him to be. Okay. Questions about this part of the interview. Is Sylvester talking about his relationship with his parents, with his kids, or with his co-workers? Number two, is Sylvester talking about his past, his present, or his future? Number three, is Sylvester wearing casual clothes, dressy clothes, or fitness clothes? Okay, now I will repeat the video and I'll pause and we'll analyze the different parts of this video. Here we go. I finally found that's the role model. <laughs> so when you told your parents what you want to do is be an actor, did they say get a real job or something like that? Well, that's... First, let's get the question. David Rubenstein, the interviewer, said, So, when you told your parents you would like to be an actor, did they tell you get a real job or something like that? And then... Rocky says, well, that's the line. Rocky. Sylvester Stallone says, he says, well, that's the line. That's it. Uh, in Rocky, because, you know, you weren't born much of a brain, so you better start using your body. Uh, they didn't put much uh, faith in that, that particular occupational choice. They didn't put, he's talking about his mom and his dad. They didn't put much faith and they didn't put much faith in that particular occupation or choice. They didn't believe Sylvester could become an actor. So I just said, look, guys, uh, it's one of those things where they said, we'll have something to fall back on. I go, what? Literally what? I... He's saying, he doesn't complete the sentence, but he says, well, these are those things that... He doesn't complete the sentence, but we understand that 
These are the kind of decisions that you don't go back. This is already decided. He doesn't complete the sentence, but we understand that he's telling his parents, no, I'm not going to change my direction. And then his parents tell him, we need, to, we need to have something to fall back. We need to have something uh, trustful. Come on, we cannot take the risk. I, 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 I'm not good at anything other than daydreaming. And... and then he says, I am not good at anything other than daydreaming. Imagine, uh, I'm not pragmatic at all. I'm... And I'm not good in anything rather than daydreaming and imagining. I'm not pragmatic at all. He's going to say, I'm totally abstract. Oh. Totally abstract. I'm totally abstract. So I need to work with creativity. And uh, they took me to, <laughs> I don't know if I ever told anyone this. Now, part of the conversation, when he gets a little bit emotional, he says, well, they took me to this, well, I don't know if I have ever told anyone this. And then he brings a new story to the interview. When he does this, we all wait to see what's coming next. At 16, and after being expelled from 11 schools. At 16, when he was 16 years old, after being expelled from 11 schools. At 16, they took me to the Drexel Institute of Technology and they ran a, a battery of tests. They took me to the Drexel Institute of Technology and they ran me a battery of tests. And in conclusion, I still have it. They said, Sylvester seems to be deficient in this. In conclusion, they said, Sylvester seems to be deficient in this and that. Deficient in that. We recommend him to be. We recommend him to be. And now I will not keep the interview because it doesn't matter what they recommended Sylvester to be. And now I ask you, what do you want to do this week? What are your goals for this month? Where will you be in five years? Let's sing a song together. Three, two, one. Easy song. Another easy song. Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. Comment here which movie played this song. Here we go. Rising up, back on the street Did my time, took my chances Went the distance, now I'm back on my feet Just a man and his will to survive So many times, it happens too fast You trade your passion for glory Yes, tell me do you like movies? 
What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite song? Comment your answers here. Three, two, one. Hello, my friend. We're learning how to have a deep understanding about what's being said. Let me... And we understand the message and the messenger. Understanding. Now let me write listening plus reading comprehension. Understanding the person who is talking or writing. And we're going to watch a video, an interview with Phil Knight the founder of Nike. Nike is a brand, I'm not wearing Nike shoes right now, but Nike is a brand of sports. They started making sneakers and grew amazingly. I'll play part of an interview with Phil Knight. Here we go. I'll share my screen with you, okay? Joey. Sorry, me. These are ads. One moment, please. Let me get the right moment of this conversation. Here. Of your career, you would say, was when Nike went public or when Nike came to the success it currently has? What would you say is the high point, the most favorable me uh, memory you have? Oh, I just look at the, I, I kind of look at, at Nike as my work of art, if you will, and just the whole painting is what matters. Mm. And let's talk finally about leadership. So leadership is not clear to people how, whether you're born with it or you inherit it or you kind of become a leader by education. What do you think makes a great leader? Oh, they come in all shapes and sizes, don't they? That, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, Hollywood will purvey a leader as uh, tall and handsome and strong-jawed, uh, that uh, a lot of times the real good leaders are just the opposite. That uh, I think it's just the people that, uh, they, well, first of all, they, they gotta want it, and, uh, but they come in all shapes and sizes, and I don't know that there's any one lesson. Now, you are famous for um, wearing sunglasses and I appreciate you're not wearing them uh, at this interview but uh, is that because you're shy by nature you just don't want people to see you or no well basically I, I wear contact lenses it makes the sun bright and the future is so bright I wear them all the time all right now let me repeat the interview pause and we analyze let me see how I will manage 
having a computer on my hand, having to pause the video. Well, let's see. Okay, here we go. I love this guy. Humble, hard worker. He lost his son in an accident. He, his son was scuba diving in the Bahamas. I think it was Bahamas. And his son passed away. And he kept fighting. He kept dreaming. Here we go. Of your career, you would say, was when Nike went public or when Nike came to the success it currently has, what would you say is the high point, the most favorable me uh, memory you have? Oh, David is asking, Phil, what's the highest point of your career? What's the best moment you've had? And then Phil answers. I just look at the, I, I kind of look at, at Nike as my work of art, if you will, and just the whole painting is what matters. Mm. And let's talk finally about leadership. He says, the whole painting is what matters. Nike is my piece of art. The whole painting is what matters. So leadership is not clear to people how, whether you're born with it or you inherit it or you kind of become a leader by education. What do you think makes a great leader? Amazing question to a phenomenal guy. What makes a good leader? David asks him. Before, David says, well, leadership. Some people, says, some people say you were born with it, you inherited, or you can be educated. What makes a good leader? And then the master answers. Oh, they come in all shapes and sizes, don't they? That he starts his answer different from the usual. Different from many other people I've seen when it comes to leadership. He says, well, they come in all shapes and sizes, don't they? This is a metaphor. Leaders, he's talking about leaders, okay? They come in all shapes and sizes. Don't they? He's saying, well, leaders are different from each other. But look. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, the Hollywood will prevail. A leader is uh, you're tall and handsome and strong jawed. Hollywood would say a leader is a tall and handsome guy. Uh, that uh, a lot of times the real good leaders are just the opposite. Uh, and a lot of times real leaders are just the opposite. Uh, I think it's just uh, the people that, uh, they, well, first of all, they, they got to want it. And First of all, oh. They gotta want it. If you want something, my friend, you can. Uh, but they come in all shapes and sizes, and I don't know that there's any one lesson. Now, you are famous for um, wearing sunglasses, and I appreciate you're not wearing them uh, at this interview, but... You were famous for wearing sunglasses. Uh, and you were not wearing them in this interview. Uh, is that because you're shy by nature? You just don't want people to see you? or Is that because you were shy and don't want people to see you? or? No, well, basically, I, I wear contact lenses. It makes the sun bright. And the future is so bright, I wear them all the time. Okay. 
He says, well, basically, I wear eye lenses and they make the sun very bright and the future looks so bright, I have to wear them all the time. Let me see if I need to come and something else with you. Tell me, what are your plans for your future? What is one very small step you can take today to get there? Now, let's see if you paid attention. Feel. Night. This guy who was being interviewed. Phil Knight, quiz. Phil Knight is young or old? Is Phil Knight the founder of Adidas, Nike or Puma? What is an accessory that Phil Knight is wearing all the time. T-shirt, sunglasses, or jeans? What are you wearing right now? Three, two, one. Hello, my friend. We're talking about how to understand something deeply. The surface is easy, but we need to understand the general aspect of this video or of this text, and then we dive deeper. Come here, let's walk. First, let's see if this person... No, I was... Let me improve my explanation. First, we need to pay attention. The first thing is attention. We need to be focused. These days, attention is one of the most valuable assets because you have notifications, you have calls, you have new posts, you have a lot of things going on and you want to pay attention or you were interrupted. Marga, this is Marga. Marga. The daughter of my daughter, considered my granddaughter. Okay, 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 Marga. Okay, okay, Marga. Marga. Marga, pay attention. Attention is the most valuable asset. Then, after you were paying attention, try to identify is this material talking about past? This is Jack. Jack is the king. The King Jack. Is this material talking about past, present or future? Then you start to dive deeper and deeper into the material. Sit down, my friend. This is a luxurious seat I reserved for you. Good, beautiful. Congratulations. Now, let's play a game. Pay attention, pay attention. Hello, my friend. What can you read from this image here? Questions. Number one. Am I going to a business meeting, to the beach, or to the airport? Question number two. Am I in the middle of a city, in the middle of nature, or at my office? Three, let's see if you have a good memory. Am I going to play 
soccer, basketball, or beach tennis. Three, two, one. Hello, my friend. Yes, we're finishing one more class. So good to see your progress. Congratulations. Amazing to see you growing, to see you evolving, seeing new perspectives. When you are going higher, you have more perspective. You see new opportunities. Very good. Today, we understood, we learned how to have a deep understanding of texts and audios and see, analyze the opinions of the speaker or of the writer. And I told you to pay attention to the tense, if it's past, present or future. Now I ask you questions using past, present and future. You answer the questions using the auxiliary of my questions. If I ask you, did you blah, 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 this is past, you answer, yes, I did, no, I didn't. If I ask you, do you blah, 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 you answer, yes, I do, no, I don't. If this is present, if I ask you, will you, blah, 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 you answer, yes, I will, or no, I won't, future. Okay, let's go. Did you watch our class yesterday? You answer, yes, I did, or no, I didn't. <laughs> okay, did you exercise yesterday. Did you travel last year? You answer, yes, I did, or no, I didn't. Now, questions using do, present. Do you Watch our classes every day? You answer, yes, I do, or no, I don't. Do you like salad? Do you like pizza? I prefer pizza, but I also eat salad. Do you work every day? You answer, yes, I do. No, I don't. Now, future, I ask you, will you? And you answer, yes, I will. No, I won't. Will you? See your family next week. Will you eat out next weekend? Will you study tomorrow I love to see you studying my friend progress means exactly thank you very much I'm Felipe Gibi see you next class